Hello, in today's foundation roundup, I have eight foundations to review and give you my thoughts on. Some are new releases, others have been out for a while, but you've been asking me about them. I have different types of foundations for all skin types at different price points. I'll show you what they look like on me, how they apply and wear, and what my experience is with each, as well as what skin types I think would benefit most from each foundation. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. I test out a lot of face products, foundations, concealers, powders, primers, skincare, because I'm in my upper 40s and as we get older, it just gets harder and harder to find the right products. So let's go ahead and get into these foundations, see how they worked or didn't work for me and who they might work best for. You should know my skin type and the type of climate I live in before we get started because that makes a difference with how foundations look and wear. I have oily combination skin, meaning that I can get oily, shiny in my T-zone as the day goes on, but the perimeter, the outside of my face is pretty normal and can be kind of dry in the winter when it's colder. I live in New Orleans. It's hot and humid here the majority of the year. It's actually humid most of the year. It's really hot right now. I'm pretty hard on foundations because a lot of them will not hold up in this humidity and heat. I always test foundations out for several days. I don't do first impressions. Using no primer at all, various types of primers, and different application methods. I am someone that does need to set my foundations with powder. You may not be. Everyone is different and that's okay. I am just someone that does have to set my face with powder. The primers and powders that I normally test my foundations with, as well as every product I'm sharing and wearing in today's video, will be linked in the description box down below. If you hit the title of the video and then usually the word more will bring up more of the description box either below or next to the video depending on the device you're on. I'm starting with a hyped up new foundation. This is the Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow. It's $58 for one ounce. There are 32 shades. I am in shade six which is described as light medium with warm undertones. This is not my correct shade. You'll see that when we get to the application. This is cruelty free and vegan. Again, it's got light diffusing pigments that are supposed to give a soft focus finish. It's also got blurring spheres to minimize the look of imperfections, fine lines and wrinkles, and white tea extract, vitamin E, and antioxidants. So from an anti-aging perspective, this seems like it would be a really great foundation. The texture is fairly runny. This applies very easily using a damp sponge, which is what you're seeing here. You're probably also seeing how off this shade is. I'm typically light, medium, neutral, leaning, warm in foundations. I went off that and it is way too olivey and dark for my complexion. And based on what other YouTube friends have said, this has run dark and either olivey or too warm for them as well. So I feel like if I were to try and get a better shade match, I would need to go a full shade lighter and more towards the neutral territory and less warm. I'd say the coverage is medium but almost seems medium full because of the blurring effect. This also applies very nicely with a brush. That's not usually my preferred method for foundations just because of the streaking issue. Sometimes it doesn't perform as well on pores when I use a brush but this one does at least for me. It's very lightweight, very smoothing even on pores and just gives a natural flattering finish. It's not too radiant even for my oily combination skin. After a few hours I get a little bit of shine but it's not too greasy. Now, as the day goes on, this is still really flattering. Even though I do notice my pores just a little bit more, it's it's still flattering. It's hard not to compare this with the new Lancome Care and Glow Foundation, which I reviewed in my last foundation roundup. I'll have it linked down below and up in a card if you haven't seen it. It's similar in that this is a nice radiant foundation that doesn't emphasize texture the way a lot of radiant glowy foundations can. It's also a great option for those of you with oily combination skin that haven't found a great radiant glowy foundation that doesn't take you into greasy territory as the day goes on. I have an entire Hourglass brand review and I would say the majority of their products I've really enjoyed with a few duds here and there but their foundations I've not really had great luck with so this has been a pleasant surprise. I went in with pretty low expectations because of my history with their foundations but I really enjoy this foundation and I think it's a great option for all skin types. 
As I get older, I find it harder and harder to find a really good powder foundation I enjoy. So I get extra excited when I do find one and even more excited when it's from the drugstore. So this is the new Essence 16 hour cover and last. This is a new release. I briefly touched on this in a drugstore video I just did, just talking about some drugstore products that I've been loving lately. I'll have that linked down below and up in a card if you haven't seen it yet. I guess I gave a sneak peek in that video. This retails for $5.99. It's cruelty free and fragrance free. Now I'm showing there are seven shades. They're not in consecutive order though, so I'm not sure what's going on with that. The shade that I am in is five classic vanilla. It is a little bit light for me, but I can make it work with bronzer, no problem. This is a very creamy formula. I don't get kick up from this powder at all all. It applies beautifully. It's not dusty. It's pretty invisible on my skin. I can apply it with a brush or a sponge and it looks nice either way. It's not powdery looking, which is something most people really enjoy in a powder foundation. Now it says it's supposed to be a lightweight high coverage formula with a matte finish. I agree that it's lightweight. I do not agree that it's high coverage. I think this is more of a medium coverage powder foundation. I don't have a problem with that because it's very smoothing. It smooths my pores, evens out my skin tone, and, and smooths my skin texture and leaves a natural flattering finish. I don't think it's a super matte finish, a flat matte. I'd say it's more of a natural matte finish. Now keep in mind, it is hot and humid here right now. I'd say I get around three to four hours of good wear before I start getting some shine breakthrough. It's not really greasy, but I do get some shine, and this is without any primer or setting spray. Now I can blot with a tissue or a blotting sheet, and my makeup still looks good. I can then touch up with this because of the medium coverage, and it doesn't look cakey. A lot of powder foundations will cake up. You really cannot bring them for touch-ups during the day because they, they build on themselves and just don't look good. I can do that with this. So it's, it's a great kind of multitasking powder. When it comes to powder foundations, most of them, for me anyway, perform better when I use a primer and a setting spray. My skin just holds onto them better. They just wear better during the day. This one is part of that group. But even when I don't wear either of those things, it doesn't get horrid looking. I know a lot of people with dry skin are not powder foundation fans, so I'm going to recommend this for normal to oily skin. The price point is fantastic, and I love how creamy it is and how natural it looks, and it wears really nicely, especially with primer and setting spray if you want to go that route. If you have normal skin or if you live in a less humid environment, this could wear super for you without primer and setting spray. I have another newer foundation release. This one is from Jane Iridal. This is the Glow Time Pro BB Cream. This is $52 for 1.35 ounces. I have shade 14, which is way too yellow. You'll see that when we start applying it. This also has SPF 25. This is cruelty free, alcohol free, talc free, fragrance free, and is supposed to be long lasting and transfer proof. And it's supposed to gently exfoliate your skin while you wear it and moisturize and revive your skin in addition to providing coverage and smoothing pores and fine lines. So the key ingredients that I want to note, there are some fruit and flower extracts in here. There's grapefruit extract that's supposed to brighten and revive dull skin, minimize pores and fine lines, sunflower seed oil that's supposed to moisturize and soothe skin irritation. It's also got some antioxidant protection. There's also apple extract. That is what does the gentle exfoliation and refining of the skin. So this is a very thick product. As you can see, I definitely prefer to apply this with a damp sponge. It just streaks really badly with a brush and you can see it is way too yellow. I'm not a fan of the shade range of this product at all. I would say the coverage is buildable from medium to full. I think this looks okay on my pores. It doesn't look great. It doesn't really emphasize them, but it's not, not the best my pores have ever looked. And I would say the finish is more of a radiant satin finish. It doesn't make me look oily. It does feel lightweight. You can see some wear around my nose and mouth, and it just kind of, to me, I don't know what it's looking like on camera, looked okay everywhere else. I wasn't that impressed with it. At the 13 hour mark, it was completely faded. I mean, this is a long day, but because this is supposed to be very long wearing and transfer resistant, I just was not that impressed with this overall, even from the start. I just thought it started out okay. It wore okay during the day. It wasn't extremely long wearing. So this was not 
not a big hit for me, like I had hoped, unfortunately. Again, if you have more normal skin and live in a less humid environment, you might really enjoy this. I know that there are some fans of the brand out there that may have had a completely different experience, but unfortunately this did not work for me. When I first picked up the new Beauty Blender Bounce Whip Longwear Foundation, I thought it was a reformulation, but it turns out it's a repackaging of that foundation that was in the square pump bottle. So I wanted to let you know that if you were kind of averse to that packaging or if you're almost out of that foundation, this is a repackaging, not a reformulation from what I understand. I did test this out anyway, just to kind of refresh myself. So I'll go through this pretty quickly because I have reviewed this already in the past. This is 20 for one ounce. There are 40 shades. Now the shade that I'm holding here is 2.30 W light golden. The shade that I used to wear in the other one is 3.25. I thought that was a great match. So let me know how you think this matches when you see me apply it down below. This is cruelty free, fragrance free, and vegan. And it's now in upgraded sustainable packaging. This has a thick whipped texture. It applies very easily using any method. I've tried. They claim the coverage is full, but I think the coverage is buildable from medium to medium full. This doesn't enhance my pores or camouflage them. It just gives me a natural flattering finish. Now what you're seeing here is a very harsh look on a very long, super humid, hot day. It normally wears really nicely for me on, I would say, a moderately long day, maybe around eight or nine hours. And I tend to get shine breakthrough at around four or five hours, which blots away nicely. Because of the medium to medium full coverage and because it does look natural, I think this is a great foundation for all skin types. If you're looking for something like this, this probably falls somewhere in the middle for me personally, just because it doesn't keep me quite as shine free as you know, my favorite foundations do. But if you're, again, not in as humid of an area or if you don't get oily or shiny, this could probably be a favorite natural looking foundation for a lot of people. I think it would work well across all skin types and could be a great option. Next up is the Pacifica Kind Tint Skin Tint. This has been out for roughly six months. It's $14 for one ounce. Doesn't this bottle look tiny for one ounce of product? Maybe it's just me. There are 12 shades. I'm in shade 17. Don't ask me about their numbering system. I don't know how they came up with it, but that's what I am, 17 out of 12 shades. This is vegan, cruelty-free, talc-free, and fragrance-free. This is a skincare meets makeup type of product. This has a lot of skin-benefiting ingredients like squalane, vegan collagen, vitamin C, hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, jasmine flower extract, and caffeine, and a hint of coverage. You need to shake this very well to have everything mixed together properly. This has a very thin consistency. I prefer to apply this with my fingers. I'd say the coverage of this is sheer at best. They say this can be layered. I did not find that to be the case. I barely see any coverage at all with this. It gives a natural dewy finish to my skin. It feels very lightweight and it does look nice after my makeup is applied, like fresh, healthy skin. At first, I kind of was thinking of the Chanel Water Fresh Tint, how it kind of almost seems like it's not covering anything, but it gives you that almost pantyhose effect. As Michelle Wong puts it, there's something there that just, it's kind of magical. I thought that's what this was doing, but I almost feel like after my makeup's applied, it looks how my skin does when I just don't wear foundation. At the end of the day, there's basically no makeup left on my face. That does not happen when I wear the Chanel Water Fresh Tint. So this is one of those products where I have a hard time saying who it would be good for because it, it wore away or was it ever there to begin with? I guess if you just want a super, super sheer veil of coverage and you want all of those skin benefiting qualities, those ingredients, I love skin tints and tinted moisturizers, BB cream, CC creams, especially if they have have good anti-aging and skin benefiting ingredients in them, but this one fell short. It just needed a little bit more coverage since it just kind of blended away. Basically, I may as well have just worn moisturizer or a tinted sunscreen and called it a day. So I was not a fan of this, unfortunately. This was a skin tint that just fell short. 
a little while back, I did a video on various She Glam products, and within that video is the She Glam Complexion Pro Long Lasting Breathable Matte Foundation. This is not a new foundation, but I know a lot of people, because of the price point, have been curious about various She Glam products, so I wanted to include it in this video. It does come in this velvety pouch, which you just saw me remove, and it comes in this nice glass pump bottle. It is $9.49 for one ounce. There are 30 shades. Shades. The shade that I'm applying is Warm Vanilla. What I find interesting is that SPF is not listed as being a property of this product, but titanium dioxide is the third ingredient. Alcohol is also listed about halfway down on the ingredient list. It's found in a lot of long wearing foundations, but I did want to make a note. This is fragrance free and it's supposed to give a smoothing kind of filter like semi matte finish that's long wearing and sweat proof. This has a moderately thick texture. Texture. I prefer applying this with a sponge. I find it can get a little streaky with a brush, but applies really nicely with the sponge. I only need about a half a pump to get nice solid coverage on half of my face. I would say that it is buildable from medium all the way up to full coverage. It's extremely smoothing on my pores and gives a natural demi matte flattering finish. It feels very lightweight. I would say if you have normal to dry skin, you may not even need to set this. This wears extremely well for me all day long, even in heat and humidity. I get some moderate shine towards the end of the day without greasiness. I can blot it and my makeup stays intact and looks nice of the full day. My job is to review makeup and report back with what I find. Uh, yeah, I know there's a lot of people that don't want to entertain Shein or She Glam, but there are some people that are very interested in it. So I wanted to give you what I found and this wears well for me. It looks really nice on my combination oily skin. I feel if you have normal, to oily skin. This would be a great long wearing demi matte smoothing beautiful foundation for you. I'm not so sure about dry skin since it does set down rather quickly. If you've tried this and you have dry skin, I would love to know what you think down below. Now I have a powder foundation that I have been asked to try for so long and I finally have. This is the Pure 4-in-1 Pressed Mineral Powder Foundation. It has SPF 15. This is not new. This is $29.50. There are 24 shades. They sent me a long time ago. I don't know why it's taken me so long to try this. The shade light. It is clearly, as you can see right here, too light for me. So I do have to even it out with bronzer. This is supposed to have four benefits in one. Foundation, concealer, powder, and SPF. I do not rely on foundation, whether it's powder or liquid for SPF. I would advise you to do the same thing. Always wear SPF under your makeup products. Although it is a nice added benefit, I guess. It's skincare infused to reduce the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles, redness, uneven skin tone, and hyperpigmentation. It's also supposed to plump, firm, and lift the skin. So this has some extracts, vitamin E, shea butter, but it also has encapsulated retinol. It's supposed to promote cell turnover and you know provide other benefits. I'm not sure how using this over time, if you also use a nighttime retinol, how that would work as far as drying out your skin. If any of you have used this long term and also use a nighttime retinol, let me know your experience experience in the comments. It's also got ferulic and lactic acids, which also exfoliate the skin and it's got ceramides and they say you can use it day and night. One ingredient in particular I did want to note is bismuth oxychloride. It is a common ingredient in mineral powder foundations, mineral products that can irritate and break out some people. So I wanted to make note that it is in this powder foundation. I like to apply this with a powder brush and then kind of tap blend it out with the sponge. I find this gives lightweight, medium buildable coverage. It looks natural, not like a powder. It blurs my skin and my pores. A couple of hours in, it still looks nice and natural. Towards the end of the day, my natural oils start to come through and I do get a bit shiny. I feel like that glow is a little bit too much for my combination skin this time of year anyway, but it doesn't seem to affect the coverage. As with most powder foundations, a lot of times when glow comes through, it can break down the makeup and it doesn't seem to happen with this. Because of the performance, I feel like this powder foundation in particular could be good for any skin type, depending on the finish and the type of coverage you like in your powder foundations. I have another highly requested foundation that for some reason I never tried until recently. This is the Bobbi Brown Skin Long Wear Weightless Foundation. This is $52 for one ounce. There are 41 shades. I am in the shade W048. This is supposed to give a natural, comfortable, matte, 
real skin finish that's breathable and weightless. This has a combination sunscreen. It has 3% octanoxate and 1.6% titanium dioxide. Something to note if you are sensitive to chemical sunscreens. It's also got marine sugar, cane, algae extract, and natural mineral powders to help control excess oil and shine. I did notice in the ingredient list that it contains shea butter, talc, and fragrance and wanted to make note of that too. This has a slightly runny consistency. I prefer to apply this with a sponge. Now the bottle says that this is full cover. On the Sephora website, it says medium natural coverage, which is what I agree with. Now before I set it, you can see my pores somewhat. It's more of a natural finish. After the rest of my makeup is applied and I you know, have powder and bronzer and everything else on, I think it looks really pretty. It also feels lightweight. Now this iPhone clip is kind of rough. We've had some very stormy weather. I've had a lot of problems getting decent clips, but you can see it kind of separated and wore away pretty quickly. I mean, this is around three and a half hours. Each day I wore it without a primer. I had some shine a few hours in. I would say it's not mattifying, at least not for me in my climate. I have to blot and then touch up with translucent powder. It just continues along that same path all throughout the day. I've tried it with various types of primers, mattifying, pore blurring, hydrating, and it, it just wears okay for me. This is not one of my favorite foundations and I, I kind of hoped I would really like this because my favorite Bobbi Brown foundation, I'm just not sure what's going on with it, if it's being discontinued or what, and I'm not quite sure who to recommend this to. Because of how it kept breaking up during the day and getting shiny on me when it's supposed to be a matte foundation, I feel like it's not ideal for those of us with combination or combination oily or fully oily skin. And because of how it applies and adheres to the skin, I'm not sure it's necessarily great for dry skin either. So I guess if you have normal perfect skin, you might really like this foundation. This one is, is just kind of iffy for me. I was kind of disappointed. I really thought this was going to be a winner. I may save it to try during colder months, but for now it's a no. At this point, it feels like I've tested hundreds of foundations for various skin types. If you want to see more videos, I have those videos linked here for you. You can check those out. I hope you found this enjoyable and helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already, if you enjoy everyday beauty made easy. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.